Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, I'm up here on the Central Oregon High Desert this morning. It's a cold winter morning, but it is beautiful out here. And we're gonna be putting together a fire kit. Now this little fire kit has the components you need for an emergency situation. You're stranded out here, you gotta stay the night. You need fire for warmth or signaling, rescue, whatever. But it also has components in here to practice and learn more primitive skills and to have fun. So if it's not an emergency situation, fire making is fun. I haven't met anybody uh, who spends time out in the outdoors that just doesn't enjoy making fire. So learning new materials, learning new fire lays, learning new ways to make fire when it's not an emergency is just a lot of fun. So this little pouch, uh, made by Condor, available on Amazon. In fact, almost everything in here is on Amazon, and I'll put it in the description. Uh, makes a perfect little pouch that you can attach to your backpack. It'll fit in a pocket of BDUs. It'll fit in a pack. You can put it on your belt, hang it on the outside of a fanny pack, whatever, even dangle it on cordage. Lightweight, compact, but has all the stuff in here to get you through an emergency, plus to gain knowledge, to learn new skills. And I will tell you, the desert where there is sagebrush and all different kinds of desert uh, grasses and rabbit brush and juniper bark is just a tremendous place to begin to practice and learn new fire making skills. So let's jump in. In the front of the pouch is a little pocket right here that will hold two Altoids tins, the small ones. Now you may be able to get, you probably could get one big one down in here. I just prefer two of the small ones and they are filled with cotton and petroleum jelly. So there's my emergency fire tinder. Pull one of these cotton balls out, fluff up the fibers, hit it with a spark, lighter, match, anything. Seven minutes of burn time, I'm gonna get fire. Okay, then there's a zippered compartment that has a front and a back pocket and a main compartment in it. So emergency survival, lighter. I need fire immediately. That's a must and it's warm enough out here today. I think it's about 35, it's just above freezing that I don't need to warm that up with my body heat. And I also have ferro rod this is the four inch by ferro fire on bright orange cordage with their particular striker on it as well so if i need fire and i prefer to use my knife even though it has the striker Let's see if you guys can see that so there, I've, I've got my cotton batting, saturated petroleum jelly, uh, the lighter, sparks off the ferro rod, seven minutes of burn time, I'm set for emergency fire. But there's lots of room left in this little kit. So we can also put in here, right here in this little front, I have a striker. And I have a piece of yellow jasper that I found out here in the high desert country. Quartz, red, green, yellow jasper, all work well. Of course, English flint, which you can get on Amazon if you don't have anything in your immediate area and you want to get out and practice. But that gives you, you can see the sparks right there. So there's something I can practice traditional flint and steel fire making with. Set those off to the side. Now in the middle pocket, I have a full-size Altoids tin. And that is just char cloth. So right now, I hit, it is pretty well stocked. I've got some bits and pieces. These are old jeans in here, uh, turned into char cloth. And I also have the container if I need to make more char cloth. I've always got bandana in my pocket. I can tear that into shreds, put it in this can, and make more. 
if I were to need it or if I just wanted to work at it. So this gives me a way to practice and to learn more traditional and primitive fire skills and to have fun. You know, when you're out here doing a fire and you're not in a hurry, it's not an emergency, it's fun to practice. You know, can I get a flint and steel char cloth fire going when it's raining, when it's snowing, uh, when, when it's doing crazy things out here? Will sagebrush bark work? Does it need to be completely dry? Will it still go when it's a little bit damp? What about juniper bark? What about all these dry grasses that are around me? So many things to experiment with out here. So many things to learn. And do I need a wind reflector? Can I get behind a tree? What about this type of fire lay out here on a day like this? Just so many things to practice and have fun doing it. So this little lightweight kit, I also have a Fresnel lens. I just think that is really cool. Actually, this particular desert, I'm just a few miles from the place that I did my very first ever fire with the Fresnel lens. And I remember it was the middle of winter and it took a long time because the sun was at such an angle and, and there were intermittent clouds and I ended up waiting something like 20 minutes and I finally got a nice long stretch of sun and I had this down, I was practicing with uh, jute twine and I had this down there focusing my little beam and finally it started to smoke and then flame and it was so cool to do that for the first time. So again, things like these, char cloth, Fresnel lens, flint and steel. And of course, if you've got cordage with you and you've got your knife with you, you can uh, juniper. My very first bow drill ever was done on juniper. And I actually had fire with my first bow drill in, I believe, under 60 seconds. I got, uh, got a coal, I should say, in under 60 seconds on my first try. So that was awesome. So the desert is just a great place to come to practice and whatnot. But anyway, everything's on Amazon, the little Condor pouch. And you can kind of see here, it's got the front pocket, which depending on how you want to organize it, you could put a couple lighters out here. I preferred to put my cotton out there. And then you've got the two inside pockets, plenty of room for everything that I just showed you. Uh, you can go on Amazon and type in flint and steel. You can get the flints, you can get the steel by itself, or they have kits that come in a little can where you can get some already made char cloth, uh, a flint, some jute, and your striker, ferro fire. This is the four inch rod. I prefer the five inches. I, I like having the length, but a five inch will not unfortunately fit in this little pouch. So I went with the big diameter, but I still get a good amount of sparks. And then the Fresnel lenses, of course, are also on Amazon and Bic lighter. So let me pause you guys, move this stuff out of the way. Let's, let's light something. I got a bunch of uh, sagebrush bark here. Let's see if we can't uh, do a flint and steel fire and get that going. All right, guys. So I just went around to different juniper, I mean not juniper sagebrush, you can see it all around behind me. And on some of the bigger pieces, stripped off sagebrush bark. If it's been raining or snowing, just strip off on the undersides of the branches where it's still dry, leave the wet stuff up on top. So I need a tinder bundle. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling fibers apart. I want small hairs small hair-like fibers, a whole bunch of them in the center of this. So I'm just gonna basically turn a whole bunch of fibers inside out, tear them, rip them apart, until I get a whole bunch of small fibers loosened up. And then I'm going to form that into kind of a, a bird's nest. So you can see what I'm doing here. I know I'm putting up a lot of dust. <laughs> but I got me a bird's nest formed. 
And I should leave it here and see if a bird will come lay an egg before I do my fire and then I can have breakfast. So I got a bird's nest made here. And I'm gonna pull up some more fibers in the center. See, I need a place to set that down here out of the way. Okay. I'm gonna set that down. Okay. All right, and I have my little piece of Jasper and a piece of char cloth sitting on top. Okay, I'm trying to blow that a little so you guys can see the red. Let's see. See that glowing? So I'm going to put that down. In the middle of my tinder bundle here. I'm going to fold that over. And then I'm going to blow up. There we go. You guys see that? We have fire. I'm not going to be able to leave that sit up here long. I'm going to set that down on the ground. But, and this is, this is a little damp, so it answers the one question. If the sagebrush bark's a little damp, will it still burn? I got to set this down, guys. Take one good look here. I got me a nice, nice, flame going okay so just like that here we are again uh, a day out on the high desert where I've come out to just enjoy myself and have a good time if I'm stranded if it's an emergency a storm comes in I got my fire kit which you should have in a part of every survival kit I got my lighter I've got my ferro rod I've got cotton batting saturated with Vaseline of course, me, I have more cotton batting saturated with Vaseline or cotton balls and another frail rod in my pocket. That's just me. And I also have a Fresnel lens. I have my flint and steel. Of course, I've got my knife and my saw if I wanted to work at making a bow drill. But the cool thing is, is I have everything I need. I'm going to stomp this out, guys. All right, I'm not quite ready to get a fire going yet. I've got another location over here I'm gonna move to, but uh, I've got everything I need for emergency, but I got stuff to practice and learn, key, learn more primitive skills and more fire making survival skills. <clears throat> Again, there's so much material out here. And I answered a question myself this morning. I grabbed some sagebrush bark and it was a little damp. Do I need to search harder for drier material or will a little bit of dampness still allow me to get fire with char cloth? We answered that question. Now I can go grab some juniper bark and see how juniper bark works. I've done that out here and as long as it's not too dry and crumbly and you can get thin fibers you know, lots of little thin fibers like this in it, it will, it will ignite. And then there's grasses. And one thing I've learned on the grasses, if you take and comb your fingers through the grass like this, and then just lightly pull up, all the real dry dead grasses come up in your fingers. 
and just slide your fingers like a comb through the grass and fill your other hand until you got a bundle. And you learn these things by coming out here and experimenting and stuff. So again, it's just cool if you have a little fire kit like this, have what you need in it for your emergency fire, emergency survival, but then use the other room to put in some stuff where you can practice and learn uh, more primitive skills and gain knowledge. Again, there is an, a, a, an abundance of different kinds of plants and brush and, of course, the juniper trees out here to experiment with. And then do the same thing up in the mountains. Go up in the mountains and try fatwood, try pine needles, try some of the uh, dry grasses on the south slopes and see and gain knowledge, gain skill. Anyway, Dan and Ochoco Bushcraft, I hope you guys like this little kit. I, I might end up even make another one of this but um i really like this because i just put it on the outside of my pack or fanny pack or waist belt wherever and on a day like today when i'm out i can uh have fun and use some more traditional skills <coughs> excuse me guys i think i got uh sagebrush bark in the lungs <laughs> But uh, anyway, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft, hope you guys enjoyed this. Get out and practice, gain knowledge. Take care, everyone.